Welcome. In this session, I would like to explain to you how to use loops in Windows PowerShell. Loops can be used to repeat a command for a large amount of data. Before I start the session, I need to make sure that you have a full understanding of variables and how to use the pipeline in Windows PowerShell. If you are unsure or you would like to refresh your memory, please visit my earlier sessions. Okay, we have three for loops that we can use. Uh, the first one is the for each object. It is used to send data through the pipeline because it will continue streaming objects to the next command in the pipeline. Next up is the for each. This is actually a, the alias for the for each object, but it also has its own for each loop statement and it should not be mistaken by the for each object which is used on the pipeline. It will throw error messages if you use it on the pipeline and the same way if you use the for each uh, object without the pipeline it's also going to throw error messages at you. Next up is the for statement. Uh, it is less complex and has less arguments, arguments than the for each statement. The for each object is used on the pipeline. It can use the information provided for the first pipeline command to go through each object to accomplish something. To use the for each object, you would specify for each object. And then in the command block, you specify what should happen for every single object that is it is looping through. The alias for the for each object is the for each or the percent sign, um, but please make sure that you don't confuse this with the for statement um, since this is the alias and the syntax for the for each is completely different. This is the syntax for the for each statement. Uh, you need to create an um, array collection first and then you can use a variable to execute uh, the command block for each item in that array collection. The for command is less complex than the for statement. Uh, you specify um, all of the initial variables, so you, you need to initialize the variable first, then you specify um, a condition that needs to be met, and then how it should, rep how it should be repeated. The bo block command will loop uh, as long as the condition is met, as soon as the condition is not met anymore, the process will stop and the loop will exit. The while loop. Um, the while loops that we can get, the first one is the normal while. Um, it will continue processing uh, based on results of the conditional test. As long as the result uh, responds with a true, the process will continue. The do while is the same as the while statement. Um, the loop continues as long as the condition is true. And the do until works exactly opposite as the do while. It will loop um, uh, continuously through uh, a condition until it responds with a false. Okay, the while statement, um, this is how it is specified. You specify while, then you specify a condition that needs to be met, and then the command block, you specify what needs to happen to each object or each loop. The do while works exactly the same, it's just specified a bit differently. You specify do, then you specify what needs to happen in the command block, then you specify while and the condition that needs to be met or it needs to respond with true. The do until specified the same as the do while. The exception or the only exception is that it will continue until it responds with a false statement. So you specify do what it needs to uh, execute and until the condition is not met anymore. Okay, let's wrap this up with a couple of examples in PowerShell ISE. Okay, I've opened Windows PowerShell ISE to demonstrate to, how, to you how to, you, uh, to create loops. The first one I'm going to use is the for each object um, that uses or needs to be specified on the pipeline. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create an object collection or an array collection with a couple of integers. And then I need to 
go through each one of these objects and I'm going to write something to the host. So the way to specify this is to use these kind of brackets, what it needs to be doing, and this is just to specify that it needs to do this for each uh, object in this object collection. So if I run that, you'll notice it will return a value for each and every object. The same way we can use the for each alias. Please do not mistake this with the for each statement that I'll demonstrate just now. So if I execute this value, it does exactly the same because this is just the alias, or we can specify the percent sign. That this is just a shorter way of writing it. it does exactly the same. Now I'd just like to show you if you create would write this value here it will give you an error message because this is not the way to specify this. If you want to use the for each object, you need to put that uh, on the pipeline. And the same if you would create another, another value and you specify the wrong for each, uh, each and use a different value, you'll notice that it will throw error messages because this is not the way to specify it. Okay, um, why would we use the um, pipeline or why should we use the pipeline or when should we use the pipeline and when shouldn't we use the pipeline? Microsoft specifies it's that it's a more elegant way of writing it. As you can see, if we use the aliases, we just have less code to write and it uses less memory. But it's also, it, hit, it will hit the performance. I've written a little script that will show the differences between the, um, the execution of these two commands. So if I run it, you can see that the for each object um, used in the pipeline just takes quite a, quite a long time to, to execute. Well, quite long. It's 280 milliseconds, where the other, the for each statement is only 20 milliseconds. And this will actually change if I run it again. You will notice that it's even quicker with the for each loop, because it saves the, itself in memory, and it will just take the, take it from a memory where the for each object is streams it directly from the pipeline. Okay, now let's go to the for each loop. The way to specify it is to say for each, use round brackets, then you need to specify a collection. So we're just going to take the collection that we've created up at the top and you specify a variable that for each item in that collection it should do something. So if I execute this, it will write something for each item in that collection. Now, another way we could use this, uh, or, or another nice little feature that we can use is to specify two little dots. This means if you're using integers, that it will take all the numbers from 1 to 10. So if I execute this, you can see it takes all the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And if we use the statement in this, we're stating it should take each of one of those numbers and it should multiply that by 100. So if I execute that, it will multiply every single one with a hundred. The for loop is specified with a for. You first need to initialize the variable. So if I initialize this to one, then I'm, you need to specify the condition. So if this condition is true, it will continue. So if I run that, you will notice it returns a true. So it will, would continue processing the loop. The next thing that you need to specify is how it should increase itself. And with the plus plus, we just say it should increase by one. So if I execute that, and if I just show you what the variable has done, you will notice that it's it started off with a one, and now it's increased itself to two. So if I run this loop, it will we will just initialize the dollar i variable again, and it will run through until it reaches five, or four actually, because four is less than five. By the time it reaches five, this value will be will not be true anymore, and that's why the loop exits. 
Okay, um, now just to show you what the variable is done now, it's at 5, and that's why the value has stopped. The same way we would use the while, well, we could use the while loop, um, we have to s initialize the variable first, then we specify the while and we specify the condition. Let me show you the condition is false, so this loop would not execute, but since we're going to initialize it first, it will start over. Um, down at the bottom in the command block, we specify what needs to happen and we need to increase the values by the same way we just did before uh, with the plus plus. Um, another way of instead of using the semicolons, you can just press enter and use the next value, uh, next line. I'll just show you that both ways work. So if I continue this, it'll loop through from one to four. If I use the semicolon, it does exactly the same. Okay, it won't because I did not initialize it. If I initialize it, it will run through the loop from one until it reaches its condition. Okay, the do while statement is exactly as the, the same as the loop, the while loop, you first uh, initialize your integer or your variable, then you specify do, you specify what needs to happen. You can see that it is actually exactly the same as at the top. And at the bottom, you say while this condition is met. So if I execute that and run that, it will do the same. It will go through each value until the condition uh, results with a false value. Unlike the do until, the do until will, if, so if I just run this, I just want to show you that it actually results with a false since our integer is at 5 and that is not less than 5. Okay, um, so sorry, with the do until we need to initialize our variable first, then we say do until. So as you could see, our in, well, we're going to initialize it to 1. Let's see if the value is greater than 5. That is false. That'll mean that this loop will execute. So if we run that, you can see that it starts at 1. Uh, we increase the value by 1 every time. So we can actually let me show let me show you show it to you this way. I'm going to initialize the value to one. Then I'm just going to show you that the value is at one, and our condition is false. If we increase the value by one, our condition is still false. If we increase it again and again and again. We should be at 5. Let's just see what our variable does. It is at 5, so that means it's still false. If we increase it one more time, that means the value is greater than 5, and this condition result in true, and this is when the loop will exit. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the session, and I'm looking forward to our next one.